Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about overclocking and undervolting Radeon 7 in its current state. This will be my last content piece for Radeon 7 for a bit as I did have to return the card to AMD. Being a smaller channel, that's just how things go, but luckily I did collect some data and testing on overclocking and undervolting, so let's talk about that. Okay, so first up, if you haven't watched my performance review on Radeon 7, which I just uploaded yesterday, definitely go back and watch that. It is one of the more comprehensive and detailed videos that I've done for the channel. You can view that in the top right hand corner. It's important to mention that the driver that I was using for testing was a press driver from AMD. It's the same driver that the majority of media had issues with when it came to stability and overclocking. Now, I personally did have a couple of issues with the pre-release driver, but nothing that really stuck out, uh, you know, out of the ordinary for a press driver that wasn't made public. So, uh, you know, I had a couple system crashes, a couple reboots, but you know, no real, no blue screens, no, you know, unrecoverable crashes or anything like that. Um, so I didn't really think it was worth mentioning in the performance review because these sort of things you kind of expect them to happen and then they end up being ironed out every single time anyway. However, after looking at some of the other reviews online, uh, some trusted media that you know I trust do some pretty good testing, they're definitely having some problems with the cards and the drivers. So that's definitely worth mentioning. And uh, of course, looking at some other benchmarks online, some games just perform horribly with the Radeon 7. So of course, that's just important to mention going into this video. If you watch my review, you'll see performance pretty much on par with the RTX 2080 in the titles that I tested. And this was against a factory overclock 2080 as well, the Gaming X Trio from MSI. So aside from what we're going to be discussing today, these performance issues are a problem with the Radeon 7 in its current state. All right, so let's talk about overclocking first, what my experience was and also what I've seen from other reviewers. So again, I used the press release driver from AMD and since the card wasn't recognized by traditional overclocking software like MSI Afterburner, I used AMD's Radeon Wattman. So at stock, apart from the horrendous fan profile, everything seemed to be running fine and logging fine as well. I didn't see any power limit throttling out of the box and the card was settling in just around 1750 megahertz as advertised by AMD. So business as usual, I raised the power limit slider first to max and this was an additional 20% in this case and this didn't have any real effect that I could see. In hindsight, although the card didn't seem to be power limited out of the box, the slider not having an effect could also mean that it's broken, but let's move on. Next, I increased both the core clock speed and the V-core via the manual curve, the memory to 1200 megahertz, and although I did encounter a few crashes in Heaven 4.0, normal when hunting for a stable overclock, I was able to apply a 2000 megahertz core clock with a V-core of 1150 megahertz. However, this resulted in immediate instability of the core clock with dips down to 1700 megahertz and peaks at 2000. The junction temperature was also hitting 110 degrees C and beyond quite easily, Fan speed was pinned at 3000 RPM, so obviously this was not a stable overclock. So to get this overclock stable and avoid hitting either the temperature or power limit in place, we need to reduce the V-Core. After much trial and error, I found the Radeon 7 stable by applying 1070 millivolts to a core clock of 1950 MHz. So this is a 150 MHz bump over stock and a slight undervolt of around 10 millivolts. I also raised the memory clock to 1200 MHz with the power limit raised to max. Now looking at Radeon Wattman, this had the GPU sitting at around 1925 MHz, the GPU temp a little over 70 C, and the junction temperature below 110. Most importantly, notice the GPU clock, the orange line, is relatively stable with no major peaks or dips. This was the exact profile that I used for testing in my performance review, and as you guys saw, there was a nice performance bump there over stock. To prove that I'm not just making up numbers, here's the actual frame rate over time plots as reported by Fraps, and here we're looking at the performance in Far Cry 5 at 4K. This resulted in a 9% improvement over average FPS, and more importantly, we're not seeing any dips or spikes due to throttling or in stability. So Radeon Wattman is definitely applying the overclock to the GPU. We can see a clear performance increase, but obtaining the overclock in the first place is where the problem occurs. Now I've seen both Gamers Nexus and De Bauer's review of the Radeon 7, and I trust those guys completely when it comes to overclocking. They're way more experienced, you know, in the field of overclocking than I am. I'm a complete noob when it comes to this stuff. So uh, it really is possible that I just got a better GPU sample than them because I trust they would have followed the exact same steps uh, when they saw that core clock instability. Uh, there's no doubt they would have tried undervolting as well. So 
Uh, the point being, uh, not all Radeon 7s may be created equal. There might be some really bad samples out there. I also am led to believe that the power slider does work in its current form, as with the overclock in place, I saw an additional 26 watts at load when compared to stock. Okay, so overclocking works, at least for my sample, but if you're actually going to be using this card in your system, there's still one big problem, the noise. As I said in my performance review, the Radeon 7 controls its fan based off the GPU junction temperature, which is the hottest sensor on the GPU. This means that out of the box, the Radeon 7 revs its fans up to 2950 RPM pretty much immediately. With our overclock in place, of course, consuming more power and with all of the sensors on the GPU getting hotter, the fan speed is still going to be pinned at max. So if you're actually going to be using this card in your system, I highly recommend undervolting the GPU as much as possible. Basically, this involves leaving the clock speed exactly where it is and gradually reducing the vCore until you meet instability during a benchmark or game. In my case, I was able to lower the vCore all the way down to 984 millivolts with the GPU and memory still stable. I did go as low as 975 millivolts and although there weren't any crashes, there was clear artifacting in Heaven 4.0 as you can see by the random lights and glowing models. With the undervolt in place, the GPU is now peaking at 1790 MHz and thankfully the fan speed now settles in at around 1500 to 1700 RPM. However, the really weird thing here is that the junction temperature is still above what it was at stock, raising from around 92 degrees C up to 96, yet the fan speed is lower and quieter. This leads me to believe that the fan speed isn't just based off of the junction temperature alone, but probably additional sensors on the GPU. Either that or it's just broken. The undervolt also reduced power consumption 45 watts from stock, which is a 13% reduction, sitting slightly above the reference Vega 56. All in all, you have a card which will consume less power, run much quieter but a bit hotter, and boost close to 1800 MHz on the core. Now, I did also attempt to overclock the memory in addition to the undervolt, and overall that seemed pretty successful too. When I hit apply, the junction temperature peaked at 110 degrees C instantly, the fans peaked at 2950 RPM, but eventually things settled down and everything was cool and stable again. And as a final note, this isn't me bragging about getting overclocking working on the Radeon 7, it's just me being transparent about how I ran the card in my performance review and you know the exact settings that I used. The other thing is that these cards are available to buy right now. So, you know, if anyone does have the card, at least this can serve as a bit of guidance for them and perhaps help them out if they are looking to manually tune the card from stock. So if you do get your hands on Radeon 7, definitely try this out. And of course, let me know how you go down below. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next one.